Right. Hello, everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino, and this is part of our Tech Talk that we do every Tuesday and Thursday. Thanks for joining us. We're going to give everybody a second to kind of get online here. We've got a special guest from PRP who's known for their seats here today with me, and uh, we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, as always, we welcome your questions and comments. If you have any, please give us as much information as you can about your Jeep, your application, so that maybe we can better answer the question. Um, obviously, today, Aaron Wedeking. Aaron Wedeking. <laughs> founder, president, right? The yep. whole nine yards. Yes, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your company, how you got started, you know, just. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I, I grew up an off-road enthusiast, always out uh, Southern California deserts with my family. That's what my parents brought me up doing. So always had a passion for it. And uh, so obviously my friends kind of revolved around it. So a friend of mine and I uh, um, had the idea in 97 in his garage to start building some off-road products. We looked at shocks and several other things and, and seats is what, what where we found a need and what we were both pretty passionate about, trying to you know be safe, be comfortable. Um, there was a, a little bit of a, a hole in the market there at the time. So that's what we started on and that's cool. we've been doing it since 97. Yeah, that's so nice. started nice. as kind of a garage thing and really small and just, you know, passion drives it. So it was pretty easy to yeah. just work really hard at yeah. it and you love it, you know. And you and I met, where, where'd you say? So we met in 06 at Easter Jeep Safari. Ah. Yeah, our booths were across from one another. I was the guy that kept going into the trailer that had a hole in the floor so I could pee because we were sitting there. <laughs> He's sitting there like way out in the parking lot. And I was this like working like the a, booth by this myself. Is a true desert secret right here. True desert secret. Yeah. Right, right. Awesome. Awesome. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. so um yeah, similar background to myself. I grew up, you know, just a desert rat, yeah. right? My parents taking me out and just enjoying it. I wanted to do something, you know, dirt in related. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, really cool. And yeah. I, I kind of got into Jeeps as I got a family, right? Yep. Dirt bikes were a little too dangerous anymore and just gave me something I could still do with the family. So yeah, kind of same. Motorcycles, quads, and then dune buggies, Jeeps. Yeah, you know, and then side by side. Side by side yeah. now is really yeah. big, yeah. It's good. So it's big for us. So, um, okay, let's, uh, we're, we're gonna, Deb, do we have any notables or questions right off the bat or? Peter, nice. Um, Stephen Horsch. Nice. Uh, it looks like um, it looks like Justin has um, is on with us from PRP. Awesome. Cool. Good. John Miller, Jeff Perkins chimed in. Keith Crum, Stephen Williams, um, all the usual. Stuff what about that. Kelly? I don't hear Kelly's name. I, I think Kelly's riding the motorcycle. No, no, he's home. He he drove the Silver Surfer back. Yeah. Oh, he took yeah, he, he dropped his bike and back. took off. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Tune in, Kel. Show's not the same without you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. That, so we got people from all over the country. That's right awesome. Now. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, you're going to get to know everything you want about seats, steering wheels, harnesses. You brought a bunch of stuff for us to look at today. I did. And uh, we're going to, we're going to touch real quick on a couple of the Genrite products that we complement to go with the seats. Perfect. Um, so our featured product today is the seat mounts. So as you know, we make uh, seat mounts for the JK. We do them in the front and the rear. I think there's another shot. This is in Terramoto, of course. And then there's the rears also in the Terramoto. Uh, but we also do a brand new one down here, Alex, uh, that is adjustable. So this is adjustable up and down. It tilts front and back, um, really nice. And this has a two inch range. So um, once you mount your seat, especially if you get a fixed back seat, um, it gives you that ability to tilt. Um, so, so we're putting you slider, you're putting sliders on, on that. that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah, so that's pretty nice. Very so nice. Um, that was just the, the quick uh, gen right plug there. So in case you weren't familiar with our, um, so now we're gonna talk about everything PRP uh, get your questions ready. This is the man. He can answer all of them. Okay. So 
Um, why don't Why don't you? Um, we'll just leave this in the background, Perfect. And, yeah. and you can just start talking about seats or the website or whatever you feel like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we started in '97 building seats for dune buggies, race cars, and so most of those items were uh, custom fabricated vehicles. And so, when when we're designing our initial seats they're not made for a vehicle specific, they're made for a situation. Um, do you want a seat that, that holds you in, that wraps around you really well? Do you want a seat that's easy to get in and out of? And then from there, we've, through the years, we've developed uh, mounts, like, like you guys have as well, to make them fit in specific in something, vehicles. Yeah. But it's still, you know, the, the, the core design is, what are you doing with your vehicle? Are you, are you driving it daily? Are you racing it? Are you play riding with it? And, and then we've got a seat that'll fit that need. So that, that's a big thing. Um, you know, big question that we get a lot is, you know, what, what seat should I get? How do I decide what to get? You know, I have, and they'll, they'll typically start with the vehicle. And so then I'll, I'll try to dig in a little bit more. Okay, so you got that vehicle. What, what type of riding are you doing? Are you doing any off-roading? Is it mostly street riding? Is it... Um, you yeah, know, is it a you know, trail it, only? You, even right? your size is significantly different than mine, right? Yeah. Or your wife, or whatever that looks like, yep. right? You got to understand who all's in there and the who, whole. Thing. Who all's in? There. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. and then and then size is another thing. I'm I'm uh, really tall, so I you know I hated seats that don't have a functional headrest. So let's make you know let's make the seat taller and wider and you know fit fit the guys that the are the guy. Using. Yeah, so, yeah. So we always start with that, and then and then go to the vehicle. Um, so, you know, our website is prpseats.com. You can jump on there and check it out. And, you know, we tried to kind of, you know, start guiding you in the right direction with what, what type of vehicle do you have? And then it kind of, you know, narrows down the seat selection a little bit. So you can, you know, you can kind of start digging into the different, uh, options you have for that, for that vehicle. So, um, something also cool about our website is, and, and cool about PRP is, is everything we build is custom. We're in Temecula, California, and you know we're, we're cutting this fabric and sewing this seat together once you've ordered it. Um, and, and you can you can jump on here and play around. There's it's endless selections of colors. Um, yeah, we, we actually have yeah, we've got that, a few. Right? We've got um, a few here, so I think. So you've got you know like the race obviously once you different different seats. That's full race. The the fiberglass shelled seats. What I brought here is suspension seats. I'll kind of go into what the difference is between a suspension seat. And a hard shell seat, but those are the hard shell race only yep. seats. And then this and is, then, and then here's kind of our our, our selection for the Jeeps. Um, and uh, you, know, you can see most of these are going to be low sided options. You know that, and this is where you're you know getting in and out of the vehicle. Um, you know, some of our other seats are much more difficult to get in and out of, um, but they hold you in better. They're better for off road, and so you, I mean, everything's kind of a give and take. But that this is kind of showing you those options. And you can see all the different colors as well. I mean, none of these things are sitting on the shelf ready to go. We're, we're waiting for you to tell us what you want, and then we're doing it. And it's so. pretty cool. I, the last time I was at your place, you see all those big cutters and yeah. fabric rolling out. And I'm like, man, how do you keep what track of this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, though. Yeah, it is cool, it's really to, be able cool. To, to be able to, to offer all so that. So then rear. So rear bench seats, uh, something we do different than, than most of our competitors is, is we offer these in one-inch increments. So if you're building something custom, you put a roll cage in the back, and now it doesn't fit what was originally you know, originally had a 40-inch wide seat in there, and you need one that's 36 or 32 or... 55, whatever. You tell us what size you want, we build it to fit. And then you can pick different headrest options, no headrest. So uh, yeah, that's that's Pretty something cool. cool that we do. And we build those in one inch increments. And, All right. Yeah. Um, we had a good question. Or, All right. Um, tech Justin already answered it online, but I thought it'd be a good thing for you to verbalize. Cool. Jeff Lone got on and asked, what is the best way to determine if you need extra width or height <laughs> in your seat? Is there a measurement or chart available on your website? So we do we do have a chart on the website that, that will uh, help you figure that out. Um, the 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 waist size is the most is probably the most difficult because even if you are certain waist size you might like you know, sit with your legs farther apart you want a wider seat. Um, a narrower seat, and then even if you do get the wider seat, does it fit in your vehicle? So, so wide is 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 difficult. But um, you know, basically, what we say is you get the standard width seat up to a 38 inch waist, and over that you go wider. 
Um, and then once you go wider, you've got to figure out how to get it in your vehicle. Yeah, because the center console doesn't fit yeah. anymore. It's up against the door. The doors. doors don't shut anymore. Yeah. We've, we've run into all that stuff. Yeah. And all of our mounts, and I believe all of Genrite's mounts, are designed for standard width seats. As you go wider, the tabs actually get wider too. Yeah. The mounting surface gets yeah. wider. So, so you've got to really want wider you've seats. You've got to really want wider yeah. because you're going to do some fabricating. You're going to have to build some spacers or something. Maybe the seat's not in the center of the steering wheel anymore like we've designed our mounts to be because you're going to have to shift it inward or outward. But yeah, yeah what wide is difficult. Tall is a lot easier to fit in the vehicle and a little, a little bit easier to determine. You want the shoulder, you want the shoulder harnesses at your shoulder, especially if you're running a race style harness. If you're getting away from your stock harness, you can yeah. kind of get away with yeah. it. Um, but you really want that. And then obviously the headrest will be in the right spot once you get the shoulders in the right spot. Yep. Yeah. We have questions All right. from uh, Kagan. Hey, Aaron, I have an 05 TJ. Uh, it's a 2005 okay. TJ. What's a good seat? It's a daily driver during the week and play on weekends. I'm 5'7", and what's good material combination to keep me from sliding in the seat like my stock ones? Okay, so um, fabric pay plays a little bit of a role in you sliding around, but the design of the seat's gonna help a ton to keep you planted in the seat. So um, currently the most common material for our seats is vinyl. Again, that's gonna be really slippery, but the seat will last a lot longer. You can pressure washer it down, you can hose it off. It doesn't hurt the seat, doesn't hurt the material. Um, but if you were to do a suede or some of our other materials, are, they are gonna grip better and hold you in the, hold you in the yeah. seat. You're gonna notice less. You clued slight, me into that you know, a few yeah. years ago and it makes a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Yes. It's crazy how yeah. just that little and bit. And it's is, on these surfaces. Yeah, on right? the sitting surface. Yeah. We're gonna pretty much always do vinyl back here. And on this, what we call the Stein. band, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, in the sitting surface, uh, you know, a suede, maybe a tweed even, but you get, it's a little more maintenance too. Now you gotta keep it clean, keep it washed. Five, seven, I'd go with the standard height seat. And I would look at, I would actually look at this daily driver. That, that's what I put in like my old C10 that I drive back and forth to work every day. And that's the starting price? And yeah, <laughs> and you custom build it for that. It's 400 bucks, you can pick wow. whatever color you want. So that's pretty good. Not, not bad, yeah. Pretty good. Um, if you want a recliner, uh, for your TJ than the Enduro Elite, which I which I brought which here is too. What we so, brought. Yeah. So. Yep. Hey TJ, can you do a single seat for rear for toddler, or that can mount you can mount a car seat too? Um, in the rear, can you how do you mount a car seat to it? So. That's a, that's a tough question because it, it, uh, a lot of the rules with the car seats have changed and a way the mounting has changed where they've got metal hooks in the seats that they're mounted to. I mean, what I did back in the day was I took a ratchet strap, put my kid's car seat in it and ratchet strapped the car seat in, then used the seat belts to hold the kid in the car seat. Uh, you know, is that, is that the, the right answer? It's really tough to build. It's not the seat. It's how do you hold that kid's seat in there? Yeah. Um, and and it, yeah, we don't have anything specific in our seats that are going to hold that in. But And then yeah. obviously the deeper the seat, you know, the more the kid's seat is going to stay it in. in there. Yeah. Right? If you were to do uh, some of the, like on the last seat, those race seats that are real tall sidewalls, yeah. that's going to help hold that car seat in yeah, a lot more, more like this. Too. Right. Yeah. 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 But you really, right. you really yeah. want to want to figure out a way to mount that kid's seat the yeah. safest way so and then of course you know if you're going to put a single seat in the back you got to figure out a way to mount that thing right tabs yeah. or l brackets or something yeah right? yeah so yeah, all of our seats have four tabs just coming down one in each corner so it's not too difficult to do but yeah, yeah you do need to you are gonna have to fabricate Come up something, with something. For that. Yeah. yeah we do have one question on youtube sure uh, is it true that suspension seats can cause more spinal damage in a rollover accident than their normal seat so that's a, a pretty big debated uh, topic that has been uh, discussed several times in off-roading and off-road racing. And um, I think if you ask that question to 10 different people, you'll get 10 different answers, even though there's only two styles of seats. So. <laughs> and, and I think a big part of it is what you and I were talking about earlier is getting the seat belt correct. Yep. There's a lot of factors in that when people have crashed and they complain about either one that they've complained about, because you're going to hear both sides about it is, you know, did they really have their seat belt the right way? Did you have your lap belt as tight as you can possibly I mean, it's uncomfortable. That. You got to have uncomfortable that point yeah. tight. Yep. And I've crashed in both at over 100, so yep. I know. But that, that does kind of lead into what a suspension seat is. And I can jump on, if we can zoom in on this sure. seat yeah, here. Yeah, and we can lift the, it up here too. This one's, uh, 
you know, not as sexy as our completed seat, but this kind of <laughs> gives you an idea of what's underneath a, a seat and what makes a suspension seat. So a suspension seat is a steel frame. There's steel tube running all through here. And the only part of this seat that's designed to support weight is right in the middle. And this is a plastic coated nylon. We use, um, you know, uh, parachute cord to lace that. We can kind of flip that up yep, and you yep. can see there. We're gonna use a parachute cord to lace this in, but this is what's absorbing the energy as you bounce. And so um, where the argument comes from people getting injured is in major impacts, 80 miles an hour, this seat continues to give, there is no solid bottom. And so the seat will give, your seat belts get loose, and then you come back up up against the seat belt. And so that is, uh, that is, uh, you know, a downside of a suspension seat in a, you know, a high impact uh, accident. Yeah. Um, majority of play riding, rock crawling, your this seat does so much uh, good for absorbing the energy, the little bounces, the, 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 the off camber stuff, you're using a lot less of your energy holding yourself in the vehicle because the seat's doing that for you. Yep. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of positives to, to something like this too, as opposed to a, a stock seat where you're, you're on a spring that has a ton of movement. Plus the foam. And, and plus right. the foam. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're, there's no control at all. I mean, this is almost like adding good shocks to a vehicle. Yeah, Cause it's at least absorbing it's, some of that. Energy. It's absorbing and you're not, and it's not completely ricocheting you back, back. up like a spring. Yeah. Seat and I, stuff. I like this when, when you switch to this, um, I like that the sand and stuff goes through this. Yeah. That I really, or water, right? Yep. Like or anything. Water. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, quite a few of our seats have removable. Yeah. Look which I'm that. a huge fan of. Yep. Yeah. And uh, a majority of them have this mesh on the bottom. This is actually an old style here that has the solid material. Um, all of our new seats, as we build them now, all have this mesh. This mesh, in it. Yeah. So, yeah. So even the ones that I, in fact, I think this is like the seat frame of what I have in the Terramoto right now. This is exactly what you have, except, so the difference between the Comp Pro and the Comp Elite on our website is this rounded headrest. Seat oh, frame is the same. that style. Yep, the Comp I Elite, gotcha. you have the Comp Elite, which has a square headrest. Gotcha. It's, but it's otherwise, a, from here down, is same. Exactly yeah. the same. Same foam, same yep. inner liner, same seat And I frame. like that removable seat cushion. I like that shape. You talked me into that shape a while ago. Yeah. Where it kind of keeps your legs apart, boat yep. style. You yep. Know? Yeah. If you, if you zoom in on this, we get a lot of feedback. I don't want that thing in between my legs. But it but is good. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And it gives you a little something to squeeze because you, if you get a little lower sided seat, you don't have all that containment on the outside, but now you got that containment on the inside, helps hold you in the vehicle. Yeah. It's pretty nice. And so. that that seat looks pretty shallow, but once you sit in it, you yep. sink down in there. Yeah, I mean, it, this is just foam. So once you once your body compresses this foam, you see there's still some good sidewall Side, here yeah. and definitely in the in the hips and shoulders. Yeah. And you can get those uh, cushions in different thicknesses too, right? Yeah, that's... Uh, that's true too. So we, you know, we have a standard thickness on on all of our seats, um, but we do get a lot of feedback of, hey, you know, my wife's shorter. Can you build me a, a thicker cushion? Um, you know, or definitely in the race world, um, you know, a lot of guys will pee their cushion while they're racing, and so it, yes. every driver wants their own. You do yeah. not want to sit in somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. good, good. okay, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, this is an interesting one. John Lutz, um, he's a regular viewer. Which is the best spinal injury? Which is the best seat for a spinal injury? Individual? Oh, you mean so if you've already had an injury, then what seat do you lean toward? What seat do you lean for? So the, the construction of the seats are all the same in a suspension seat. So they're all going to absorb the energy the same the same way. So you still, I mean, a suspension seat over a, over your stock spring seat is just going to be a night and day difference, John. So it, it's it, it, the, the, the little bumps and the little bruises and the, and the little hits that you take are now all absorbed by the seat instead of being ricocheted back through your body and bouncing around. So any suspension seat really will make a big difference. Then from there, you've got to choose, which I was going to kind of get into we is can, what- We can go back to that. Right? Yeah, what any of these here is what, what do you, you know, do you want something really tall sidewall? These feel awesome. Like Tony was saying, everybody that's gotten in that Terramoto goes, God, these seats are great. 
but you've got to get in it. And yours, you go to door bar, you're <laughs> yeah, going to crawl you're over, over yeah. which is great because yeah. that's exactly what our seats are designed for. They're not designed to have weight right here. They're designed only to have weight right here. So getting in and out of these things is, is difficult and it's, it's really hard on the seat. They're not made to support your body weight out on that tube. You know, that's the support that holds the sling that you're sitting in, in the middle there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so now you're picking, okay, do you want, tall sidewalls. Well, this is a suspension seat here. Do you want the taller sidewalls? Or do you want, like in that last situation, we've got a little lower sidewall. Do you want a taller backrest? So if you get a seat that fits you and it's a suspension seat, it's going to be a, a huge difference over your stock spring seat. Yeah. I know for me, when I sit in one of these, what I'm after is I like it when it grabs you right here so that yeah. you can literally like just settle in the seat. And as the things are bouncing you around, you're not like feeling like you got to hold yourself, right? right? right. You're not the, you're not holding on that steering yeah, wheel trying to keep the your seats body. doing all totally. the work, yeah. and that's where it really feels good. Now, to some people, that's not good. I mean, we've had people climb into seats like this. They're like, "Dude, <laughs> this is way too tight. It's you know, too yeah. this, too that." Yeah, yeah, that's not for everybody. That's, right. That's a that's a different. It is more of a race style. Race style seat, right? You if know. you think about it, you're racing. You're either driving or co-driving. You want to spend no energy worried about are you in the vehicle. Are you comfortable? This is just going to hold you in that spot. And now you can focus on reading the GPS, reading as far out in the horizon as you yeah. can while you're driving. So yeah, it takes your, yeah. takes your mind off. I know the first time Comfort I rode a in a seat like this, it was, you know, you got belted in and you were like, oh, okay, it's a little uncomfortable. But the moment the 900 horsepower trophy yeah. truck took off, you forgot all about right, what you're right. You're like, oh, I hope we stay alive in this Comfort thing. You takes know? A, lower, uh, yeah. a lower on the totem pole. So, you know? Yeah. Totally. Quick question is um, really directed to you. Um, Chuck Williams, this gentleman, saw you at GH this year. Okay. Wanted to know if the PRP seats are in that tracer vehicle that you ran. Uh, I I believe those were a PRP suspension seat. I, I think it was this one. So um, this this is the reason he brought this is this is the most popular. This is the most popular yeah. Jeep seat here. Yeah. Yep. Reclining, low sided, easy yeah. to get in out of. Now, you know, if you cushion. get the if you get our cage with the X bar and stuff and you know you don't really need the recliner anymore, then that's that's where these come in. You know, where yep. you just fix back it and um, you know, when you mount it, you can shim it and get it at the angle you want and stuff. But really, you know, if you're if you're high performance driving, um, you want to get that seat fixed. Now keep in mind. In Terramoto, those babies are bolted in. Like there's no adjustment, no nothing, man. They're yeah. fixed right where they are. And that same way you do it in in most of the race cars I know. They're like, that's it. Yeah. It's in one spot. Yeah. A, a slider adds a weak spot. You know, yeah. And they rattle and, and they you rattle. know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of racing organizations don't allow that in the rules. True. So true. Yeah. What other questions you got? Brent Flanagan, can you fit two seats in the back of a 99 TJ? I'd like to have four bucket seats for the family and I. Uh, they'd have to be small ones. Yeah, they'd have to be small maybe, ones. Maybe some little UTV ones Our, or something? Uh, well, we make a, uh, a Premier Light, and it's 19 inches wide, so two of those would be 38. Um, the TJ, I believe, is a 39-inch bench when it's, we build a bench seat for the TJ. So more, it is right? going to be really tight, but... It's uh, it is possible. You'd have to fabricate brackets, um, but yeah, look at the Premier Light. And they, you know, you do make this style where it kind of looks like a double bucket. Yeah, right. Yeah, That's you can definitely cool. do this, and you, we can put two headrests on it to look. And like And this that. looks more like a Jeep seat, right? So it's it's actually got, you know, and then when yep. you put the headrests on that, it looks like two little buckets. In yep. There. Yeah. Yep. So it's a, it's a cool look. We had those in the bow tie for a long time. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. So. Scroggins, two-door JK and JLs, guys, we desperately need a 50-50 folding option. Oh. Something along the line is what they did in the new two-door Bronco. Please, please, please. Instead do. of the 60-40 or 70-30 thing. In the rear. In the rear. Yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. New product idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> At least that one, I think you can change and it's not connected to computers yeah. and shit you know, right like, yeah true true so those front seats man Ooh. yeah which yeah, is the which JL. we were getting to i wanted to get yeah. to that because that's going to be your option on the jljt is this yeah right so or, yeah. i mean this is for jk2 yeah, the, yeah. The, the seat covers and, and again when you're trying to figure out what type of seat you want and you're looking for just something that looks cooler 
your, or you want to protect your stock interior. Or it's already um, thrashed. Or it's right. already thrashed. Dog and got you're to to, yeah. 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 After you get rid of the dog, you order, <laughs> <laughs> you order some seat covers. But we do these all custom too. So this is kind of showing you on the website here. You can pick out, you know, what color you want the embroidery, what color you want the stitching and each different panel here. And you can really customize this you know, you know, to match what you're looking for on your, your theme, your Jeep. And, and are those pretty easy to put on? You know, if I'm Jeep, they're, Jeep guy, one they're probably the hardest seat cover to install because <laughs> they look so good. And so we could have made them easier to install, but it, 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 it does not get that tight of a fit. They're not horrible. Um, are you gluing them on? No, you're not no. gluing them. Okay. On. I mean, it's okay. a pullover. Okay. It's a pullover seat cover. You're probably in them a half an hour a piece, 20 minutes, a half an hour a piece to get them in oh, there. Oh, that's not bad. Get them all worked around. Okay. You know, the, this other side that's not visible has the, you know, oh, reclining yeah, the mechanism stuff, that you're yeah. stuffing around and getting yeah. them underneath the seats here or the headrest plugs. You have to take any of that stuff off? No, no. You don't take any. You do have to pop the headrest out to get the backrest push down okay you know and then you finagle that on you know, that cover on while you have the headrest off it's a little easier to yeah manipulate on the ground but, but you know you let these things sit outside kind of warm up in the sun for a little bit a lot easier to use and a lot easier to do but cool. i don't want to i don't want to lie and say oh they just slip right on if they did they wouldn't look that good <laughs> <laughs> but great so. option for the jl jt guy yeah definitely definitely because yeah. the jl and the jt both have you know they've got weight sensors in the seats they've, it, 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 there's it, airbags are standard JK's only some models had had airbags. So you start disconnecting that stuff, you're really changing the, you know, you're really changing a lot of features. That, yeah, that whole safety restraint safety system. Safety restraint system. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, so. okay. Our viewer Stephen Williams is from uh, Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, and he asked if you had a couple of samples you could ship out to their shop so the uh, boys on the East Coast could try them out. Ah. Sample seats. Yeah, definitely give our um, our uh, sales team a, a call, and we'll hook up with the yeah, local and shop. Somebody's and, on there, right? So they can maybe connect. Yeah, Justin hopefully yeah. can can connect you with yeah. uh, you know somebody on our sales team. But yeah, yeah, we we definitely try to work with shops all over to get to get displays because this is a touch and feel product. It's really hard to buy these. I, I totally get it online. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, it's difficult, but yep. nothing like sitting in them to really know what you got. Anything else, or should we keep going? Yeah. Okay, so um, anything else on these for the JLJT crowd? Is there uh, a back seat deal? Yeah, on the, yeah. So the Jeep seat covers, we've got front seats, back seats. We, we got them to match. Uh, of course, they made the seats so different, you know. So we've got to know: did, did you have a Rubicon? Because right. that's different. Did you have a Sport, leather so seat? Right. Had yeah. a, an armrest in yeah. it, and the non-leather doesn't. So there, there are a lot of options, and we've got it all kind of laid out on our website. You go a little farther down, you pick all the different. Uh, you know, configurations your Jeep originally had in it. So we make sure the covers fit, so. Okay. Yeah, we've got what the covers. So, so, oh, and then this kind of goes through, uh, yeah, here you're giving you an idea the of the selling. color selection we yeah. have, so. Yeah, and there's one more, I think, after this, right? Yeah, that's, so that would be the stitching color. This kind of shows you, you know, what you can do here with, uh, uh, we picked a suede, a black suede and a gray suede, and then a yellow. Yeah, and if you haven't been over to their website, they have a little diagram with dimensions. So yep. if you're trying to figure out if you can fit it in your Jeep. Yeah, fit it in your Jeep. Or that guy that was talking about, do I order it taller? Just measure, you know, sit on the ground, measure from your butt to your shoulders, compare it to this measurement here, and you can kind of get an idea. You know, you want to be within an inch or two. You want this slot within an inch or two of your shoulders. Yeah, the, like right there. Right? Yeah, yeah. And closer the better, for sure. Okay. And then uh, is that normal? Seven weeks is about what it is right now. Right now we're yeah. Right now we're about seven weeks. So okay. not uh, bad for a custom. Completely custom. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, our goal has always been two, and to be seven is right now. Right now is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we're gonna we're gonna get back to two, time. but man, yeah. it's been a tough time. Yeah, getting and fabric, think, getting employees. I think we had a. There we go. Yeah, here's an idea. Colors, of fabrics, colors, right? right? So most of the selections here, all the way down to here, are. To hear are vinyls, all different types of vinyl. So you know, ones that look like carbon fiber, it's still a vinyl. Ones that look like ostrich skin, it's 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 still a marine grade vinyl. And then we've got a couple different suede options, some tweed. Um, if you're going for kind of that retro look, the Cordura material, which on Cordura material you're going to get um, a real rugged material, but it's never going to lay as nice as vinyl. Or vinyl, you're going to get it, it's going to lay nice. It, it stretches, it molds to the seat. Cordura is stiff and rigid and it's just, you gotta yeah. know that's what you're getting. That's, yeah. what, that's the look you're going for, yeah. so. 
Yeah, but, but there should be something for everybody's liking on the on the website. So yeah, pretty nice. I mean, that's amazing. You and I were talking about that. I don't know how you offer all these different things. Yeah, yeah, it, it drives so, manufacturing yeah, people crazy. We'll, we'll leave that last <laughs> one up there. Okay, um, more questions or can we? All right. Okay, keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin Kerwin, interested in putting some PRPC to my JM, but I understand that there are a few seat belt airbag sensors that would complicate the task. Do you offer or plan to offer any solution that would help with the electrical sensor issues or is there any other vendor that you might suggest i'm looking into options before i break out the electrical diagrams and work out a custom solution i think some guys on the forums have done that um we we've heard through customer service we've sold this seat uh for jl guys we are not sure how they're mounting it or what they're doing with that safety stuff. So we have not. They're, so they're, they're either like ripping apart their factory seat and shoving it back in here somehow. Yeah, that, you know, I mean, that is one. That's you could project. take that pressure sensor out of there and stick it in there. I mean, that's, but, but is it going to be the exact same? We have no yeah. idea. So yeah. we're not sure what that would take to do. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big not on Not on our to-do list yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> those are really new the jail is really new yeah the, yeah. yeah the jail is really new but so. they're man they're huge they're catching yeah, on they are uh, they're selling so, so. Uh, tom parson is there any option to put prp in an 09 jk that has the ability to move up and down so that would be in the mount and um this looks like the best option i have seen here is is a, a a mount that replaces your stock mount because your stock mount doesn't move up and down so you know the seat here you're, you're just four tabs this is where prp stops and then we get we, we do offer some mounts that will adapt those four bolts to your stock slider um but we don't offer a complete replacement and we've, we've relied on uh, people like generate and tony here to, to come up with you know this is a really genius idea here to give you all of these <laughs> options to tilt the up and down because we do get that question a lot yeah and so you know here here is your here is your option to yeah to and that it. would be call in and talk to our guys about seat mounting options um, because you really got to decide whether you're going to keep that adjustable or not and uh jeff andrew the guys across the street they're still there and uh they can answer all your questions on that stuff okay uh, Jeremy Rowell, any mounts for an older XJ? Um, I, I don't have any. I don't know if you do. We have adapters to the stock sliders, and I'm trying to remember. It was whatever year is the same as 95. Whatever group of years is the same as 95. Um, uh, we have an adapter to your stock slider. So as long as your stock sliders are still in good shape, you, we have adapters that'll work with these. Yeah, so typically what happens is even in the older Jeeps, you know, like that was kind of why people with CJs and YJs were looking for new mounts is because they get yep. just clapped out, loose. right? Yep. So now the whole seat just shakes and that's not very confidence inspiring when you're off road. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> that's so, a little excitement. We're, and we're working our way back. So um, we're gonna, we'll have this kind of stuff for the YJ, the CJ, um, obviously we're pretty busy with JL stuff right now, but we're working on all this stuff. And I, I wanted to have it done before you came, but oh, that's yeah. okay. It's a good topic to talk about and let people yep. know what's coming. Yep. So what else we got? Corey Lomo-Picard, is there a quick disconnect for the JKU to run the PRP steering wheel? Yeah. I've seen one on the Genri page, but the description is TJ for the same quick disconnect. Uh, what I need for the JKU. So when it comes to the, the quick disconnect, um, you can put this, this will go right on your uh, JK. The difference is, is that you can see, you know, this is completely separate. So you're not gonna have your horn through there anymore. You're not gonna have your clock spring. So right now on a JK, there's something inside that's talking to the computer that when you turn slightly, it starts to apply the ABS and your traction control thinking that you are sliding, you're on ice, you're on sand, you're on something, right? This is the problem with the vehicles as they get newer, they're trying to make it safer, yep. which look, you know, you're, you're throwing the keys to your 16 year old daughter and sending her out, you know, and what, yep. no, who knows what kind of weather, that's a great deal. 
right? For you and I, we're like, come on, man, oh, we want to slide it sideways, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, so, um, so anyways, you'll get a light on the dash that that will say that you know your clock spring is gone. Um, you can put a piece of tape over it. You can just ignore it, but that's that. It will go right on. So, it is possible. Yep. And that, that does lead into our steering wheels a little bit. I yeah. kind of talk about these. So, so um, when we started uh, looking into designing steering wheels, we're, we're trying to do kind of everything in the driver bubble, you know, comfort, uh, Makes style, yeah. everything that, you know, that the driver's feeling every day. So, so there, there are a lot of great steering wheels out there and there are a lot of crappy steering wheels out there. <laughs> so we, you know, we kind of spent some time trying to figure out what, what you know, what, what makes them great, what, why, you know, what, what can we do to make them better? And so, um, you know, in that, in that design process, we, we, we took several steering wheels apart and tried to figure out what is really, you know, what can we do to make them better? And it's the steel uh, that's underneath this foam that is thicker, stronger than, than most. It's the thickness of the plate, the mounting plate, you'll notice is, is thicker than most. Because you're holding onto the wheel differently in an off-road vehicle, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, and you're taking impacts that you don't, you're not taking when you're driving down the street. Right, you know? right. So, so you, you need to feel confident that this is a solid connection to the vehicle. You don't want little flexing in, in, in you just lose that little bit of control, especially at speed, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, so. Yeah. So we have spent quite a bit of time. We do have flat steering wheels, but you can kind of tell from looking here, this is a flat one. We have a deep dish that, that will put the steering wheel a little closer to you. Uh, the deep dish is real popular in the UTV market and the flat wheel is real popular in the Jeep market. Yep. So yeah, I mean, mine's right over there. I think I got the yeah, flat one, Yeah, this right? is, a, the, yep. Yeah. And then there's suede too. So yeah. we've got suede and leather. This is real leather, real suede. Um, and yeah, this is a, a perfect option of connected to a a quick disconnect. It's a universal six bolt pattern that's very common among yep. among all the manufacturers of steering wheels. So yep. um, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's the one I used race king of the hammers. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. tried and true right there. So awesome. I'd love to hear yeah. that. Yeah. So, more questions. Uh, mm. Chuck, what do you think that's the big one? Is it or generate to be at the Smoky Mountain Jeep Day? <laughs> Are you going back there? I don't uh, know. You know, that's that's a popular show. You know, I, ha I haven't been back there yet, so. I have not, and I and I don't think I am personally, but our guy on the East Coast might be there. That'd be a great question for Justin. If yeah, Justin maybe, knows if Corey's going to that or not. That. Yeah. So. Um, Sweat seat rails are good for a two-door and be able to get someone in the back seat. Yeah, that's a tough one because it's got that fold and tumble yeah. thing. So uh, a two-door what, a JK? Probably say. that's most common. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. And, and I don't know why I ask because my answer is the same. So <laughs> if, you, if you use our adapters, our mounts that we have are adapters to your stock pedestal. So you're still using your stock pedestal, your stock slider, and all of that hinging mechanism is in your stock. Stays unit. there. Stays there. Yeah. So the seat still comes up and goes forward. You know, on the on the TJs, the whole thing hinges up and forward the seat slides right up against the steering wheel the front of the seat goes under the under the dash and you yeah can you'll you'll back. have to manually kick this yeah right and, and in like the factory one that did it all at one time right right, right. it is a little more work you're gonna have to find the bar that actuates the the hinge forward twist that and the whole yep. seat move forward yeah. So, yeah. but totally possible yep definitely. as long as you retain that as long as you keep all your stock totally stuff and, stuff and just adapt these seats to it yeah yep. you start doing something you know, more racy. a little racy where yeah. you want a real strong mount like this, you're going to lose some of those features. Yeah. You guys are getting a little pushback for not being at Smoky Mountain. <laughs> I know everybody wants driving. us to go back there. Right? Right? We start driving there now. <laughs> when is it? Brad, <laughs> any of their seats with stock seat belts and no harness? I want to go full seat cage harness eventually when it gets to trail only, but my 23. Y O year old seats yeah. are pretty much done. Yep. Yeah. In fact, if you go to our website, go on to galleries, drop this down, uh, look at the yellow JK we call the Wolverine that's in there. It has both the factory and PRP. They're yellow, you can't awesome. miss them, are are in there. So um, yes, that's common. 
a lot of guys like that. I actually, when we sell a cage, I prefer that the customer installs the factory belts and harnesses. That way they got their choice. Yeah. I think Shane has the end bow ties. End bow tie. So, so if you're, yeah, uh, Shane's a JK, you know, a Wolverine, and then the bow tie. By the way, you can also just uh, in the search box type Wolverine or type bow tie, and it'll pull it right up. Okay. So one little caveat to that too is you want to make sure you have a lower sided seat so you can still get to that female side of your seat belt. If you've got a real deep seat, it does make it a little more difficult to, to get yeah to get to and now yeah now that seat's gonna interfere with it getting tight on your lap. So yeah. so yeah, you do gotta have a, a lower side this seat. This style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More of a daily driver yeah. style, right? And the only way you're gonna get a recliner to work is not have a harness bar too. So once you do go to the harness bar, it, it, you're you're you could still use a couple of notches on your recliner. Yeah, and I've seen people that'll still like kick it forward just to get like just little get stuff. Yep. You know, like you offer pockets on the back and stuff. Yep. So yep. Um, those are so, and we actually we didn't talk about any of those options like heated or yeah any of that stuff. Yeah, those are all that the heated's a real common option. Yeah, we get that a lot. So we can add seat heaters to these when you're ordering them, and it just comes with a generic wiring harness. So you're just hooking up a hot in the ground. Uh, running a switch to your dash yeah and uh but yeah there's a heat element on the back and the butt it gets 107 degrees it's really nice it it's is really, really nice yeah so yeah. and then pockets we do have a we have a front goggle pocket that, that goes up here um or a back pocket that goes in the back of the seat um some of the racers will do a water pocket where we put a pocket on the side and then put in a camelback, camelback yeah. yeah which yeah. is which is a, a, a cool option yeah i mean in a jeep you know you can use all the storage you can get you yeah know, wherever is, you can get room so, right yeah so as you guys know we offer all those bags that go on the doors the prp makes all those for us too oh so. yeah 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 that's right all yeah. your door bags yeah so what else you got our friend back east peter Goodwin asked when will you be making an ejection seat for the passengers <laughs> <laughs> my wife's watching never <laughs> Okay, so actually, we where are we at right now? Okay, so we need to switch to seatbelt, right? Yeah. Harnesses. This is like a big topic. You've got a lot of explanation. Let's slide some of this out of the way a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And um, talk about you know the the way that it's laid out, the idea, you know, all the different styles, right? Okay, so. We came up with a, a, a number system. It's not industry standard. It's just something that kind of made sense to us, helped us kind of explain the, the different style seatbelts. So, you know, we do this 4.2. So what that means is it's a four point belt, meaning it mounts to your cage in four points, two shoulders, two laps, bolts down to your, to your chassis. And then two is the thickness of the harness, three inch, two inch. So as you, as you go across the board here, of course, the next one's super confusing. So ignore that one. So 4.3 is <laughs> three inch uh, wide. Yeah. Three right? inch wide, four points, right? As opposed to two inch, right? And then 5.3 is the fifth point, which is the crotch belt, which is uh, super which important, super important. Yes. And, and, uh, the, and a three inch wide belt. That's the standard race belt. That's that SFI, uh, SFI approved. Yeah. That everybody's using is that uh 5.3 oh tilted oh, oh you're getting a reflection sorry <laughs> that 5.3 are belt. all of them doing that so okay. all of the belts on this side all have what we call our racing latch and link style so that, that's a different another separator is um is the the latching style itself and then a, a really popular belt for us is this 4.2 and and it's because of the easy use. It basically has a automotive style buckle. So it, it it's you know it still has the shoulder harnesses, the lap belt, but when it comes to latching it, oh, it, I haven't even seen that. Yeah, that yeah, is. It, it's basically the same. Okay. The same style you have in a car. Huh. Um, is that common for like kids in the back seat? It's or? really common for for kids in the back seat. People that don't want to fumble with a real you know, race, latch, latch style. and link style. Um, downside to this, in my opinion, is it's not fifth point. You don't have the crotch strap, so it's hard to keep that lap belt where it's supposed to be. And you need to clean these often. So you've got to keep dirt out of out of your latch mechanism. So, um, but real easy to use belt for, for you know, 
common certainly usage. Certainly better than stock. Much better than stock. Yeah. <laughs> the worst thing about off-roading with a stock seatbelt is that ratcheting mechanism where the seatbelt gets loose and then tight and you don't know when it's going to grab you and it's pulling you sideways. And then uh, and then it's constantly ratcheting you tighter. I, I yes. I'm sure yeah, everybody's you get off camber that. and now it won't let you look yeah. out the window right. or anything, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. So here you're always getting constant pressure if you run a harness. You're, you're always the same. Yeah. It, it, they're not getting loose and tight. And you got the pads on there, so it's not like cutting It's your not neck cutting you. All of our off road belts all have pads yeah, on it here. That's nice. So. Um, I'll, I'll kind of go through one more little rundown on belts. And that is a, a question we get a lot is, do you make a lap belt that is a pull up style? So the yellow here is kind of our standard belt. Um, it's what's most common in the industry. It's a pull down. When you tighten up your lap belt, you're pulling down. And you can see, I just did it. When you pull down, your hand hits the seat, really affects the ability to get that seat belt tight because of that. So you end up having to kind of, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of yes. not now, in the lower pressure. bolster seat, like the daily driver, it's fine. It's a lot easier. It's right. fine. Right. It's, it's definitely a lot yeah. easier. Yep. And, and uh, like Tony's mentioned before, and I'll mention again, you know, the key to getting this to work right is getting this lap belt really tight. So how, how you order this, you know, really makes a big difference because you want this lap belt uncomfortably tight. And then, you know, you hook your the shoulders to it. Um, this is the race style latch and length. Why we're saying it's a little more difficult because it's a little more work hooking these up, but, but you hook these up and then you just, um, you know, the shoulders are something that everybody grabs while they're off-roading. They're constantly kind of tugging on the shoulders when they feel a little bit loose. And if they're not running the fifth point, all that does is suck that lap belt up. And next thing you know, it's a chest strap and, and it's it not working nothing. at all. Yeah, it does yeah. nothing for you, but hurts you. So, <clears throat> so that's that. So, so then we get the question, well, do you make a pull-up belt? And we do. This is it here. You can see now it pulls up. And some of the disadvantages of this is <clears throat> the distance between where this adjuster is and where it mounts to your chassis is a fixed position. There's no easy way to adjust this. So where do you so now that this is fixed, where do you want this? Do you want this adjuster here? Do you want it here? Do you want it outside the seat? it depends on how big the occupant is in this seat. So where you really want this is right here on your hips so you can grab it or outside your seat so you can so you can get a good pull on it. Um, being outside your seat, that's gonna depend. Is, do you have a door here? Do you have something in the way to where you can't get to it? So most guys are running this right inside so it ends up on top of their leg. Well, I'm a really big guy, so I'm gonna need that. My top of my leg's here. Tony's top of his leg's gonna be down here. And now you have to adjust this is a pain in the butt to adjust every time. So that's why this style belt is not as common. You don't see it as often, um, but it is, a, it is a great option. It is pretty common in, in off-road racing. Yeah. It's popular with the racers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're going to, you know, set it and forget it, you're the only guy driving, you're the only guy that's sitting It's seat, perfect. It's great yeah. because it's going to be much easier to. I know, I know for me, you know, we can come into a pit, somebody can drop the, the net and just yank this yeah. thing where yeah. these, you know, they can't really get in. Yeah, you're not going to get any outside help on yeah. a pull down belt yeah. for sure. Yeah, so, you're going to have to figure that so out. So it just kind of depends. You know, it's got its purpose and yeah. its place, you know. Yep, definitely. And it's great. I didn't even know you offered those. So that's awesome. Yeah, it is, it is something. And, it, you know, we used to have to custom make this. The guy would have to tell us, hey, from my mounting point to here, I need it 12 inches. And we got, we finally got SFI to be okay with us doing this three bar slider. It's a mount that's adjustable. The, can, the customer can adjust this to get yeah. it exactly right. And that's tough, you know, because uh, for this race, my co-driver was this big. And my next race, my co-driver, and then now yeah. the thing doesn't work anymore. And you're or, like, oh, no. Or worse, if you switch in the middle yeah. of a race. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah that's really hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good. So, and then one, one more little thing here is a two-inch. Um, you know, two-inch belt's a great way to go in a, in a play in a play car because it, it doesn't rub your shoulders as hard it's not as it's not as rough on you it's better for smaller people um and it's just as strong it's just not as common as a three inch but it passes the same strength test that the three inch passes for SFI mm. rating um more and more races are catching on to it mostly because of the hans device it needs to be narrow like this to fit through the hans device yep. so the races are kind of catching on to two inch um it, so it's becoming more definitely more and more popular um, of a belt and it's great for play too so it's uh, we do offer one i did not bring which is a 5.2 which is full five point belt just like our 5.3 but it's obviously two, two inches inch. instead of three yeah so. yeah that yeah. five point is really 
I mean, the once you have driven in a vehicle with that fifth point, you don't no. want anything different. No, you, you know it makes it. And having that cross strap adjusted to the right, the perfect yes. spot to where it's holding the lap belt is just yeah. yeah, it's hard to beat. Definitely yeah. hard to beat. So. Got any so. any questions? Yeah. yeah. What else? Yeah. JK factory heated front seats. Can we do a back section only heated seat and reuse the factory but, for your butt? Um, I mean, you would have to pull that mechanism out of your seat. Um, you destroy the seat. You would destroy out. your seat getting yeah. it out. Um, but it, it's, I mean, it would be possible. It's just a, if you've ever looked at one on Amazon or anywhere, just Google seat heaters, it's just a pad with either carbon fiber or a wire element. I'm not sure what OEM does. And then, uh, yeah, you, the, all these covers are removable. All of our seat covers are removable. You peel it off, Get stick in it in there. It, it in. would be something you would do, uh, obviously. Now, do you typically put it under a layer of foam or is it right under the vinyl? It's it's right under, so all the vi all of the material that we put on the sitting surface has quarter inch foam oh, attached to it. it. Gotcha. So it'd be right underneath that. So okay. it's only going through about a quarter inch of foam. Okay. So. Is it possible on Amazon? Did they yep. work? Did they work? Oh, so Jamie, if you can't hear Jamie in the background, he says he bought some on Amazon for a back and a right, right. So okay. he's gonna add seat eaters. Yeah, yes. they do sell kit. You can add seat eaters to pretty yeah. much any seat, yeah. and they're they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, Yours are like really nice quality ones. Yeah, yeah. We've definitely spent the time because we do not want to ship that seat back and forth two or three times right. to find out the that customer going we had an issue with it. Yeah. So we do spend the extra money to get you know yeah. nice seat eaters. Are you made. still Good. doing the lumbar and all that stuff? The little yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, the air lumbar. That's an option you can add. Um, on lumbar, we can add foam, and that that's pretty minimal cost. Or we, it's a hundred bucks or so to add a, an airbag, basically, and you get a little pump that you can pump up and. Yeah, but guys with back problems that are always, if you're adjusting your lumbar in your truck every day when you drive it, that's something you should consider when you buy PRPs. Yeah. What else you got? I'm assuming I should probably only go harness with a full roll cage, not just a harness bar and stock cage. Well, man, that would depend I on mean, how you attach that harness yeah. bar to that cage. Yeah, and you know, what kind of wheeling you're doing. I mean, you know, the bottom line is it's like, are you wearing a bicycle helmet or a full face helmet, right? You know, like, I think yeah. he's just trying to assess what would be the wisest, safest option. So the, the only thing I would mention is when you put these harnesses on and you get them adjusted properly, you're not hanging an arm out the door and looking around like your average guy. You're in the vehicle. Yep. Right. If to have them adjusted where when you toss it, it's going to help. Right. Yep. And I just saw a video of a guy with one of our cages. He was just coming down something. And when he dropped off the thing pogoed and that dude, it went from what looked like a slow rock crawl to like horrendous going through the trees. And I got to tell you, that's when you go like, oh, I can just use this one to like, you better have this or you're going to be getting out of there with a lot of injuries. So. Cause you're a rag doll in there. I, I got news for you. You may be Mr. Burley, but you're not holding on. No, yeah, it's crazy what <laughs> it's happens. Crazy. Yeah. The things go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, our car requested Tiffany blue seats. Tiffany, is that is that a color? <laughs> so that's pretty close. Isn't it? <laughs> so uh, you've got a special order at Colin and ask for jewelry box blue. Oh, and, uh, and oh. Uh, all the ladies are getting it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't see it on the website, call in. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a few. Adding a color to the website is really difficult because we now have to, you know, make that image for every seat we make in possible. every location yes, possible. Yes, yes. So it's a ton of work. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, it's easy, but the web guys complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because now they got to build it with every possible yeah, combination it. right it's yeah pain, yeah <laughs> yeah cool. uh, Justin asked if you could fold the enduro elite forward and back oh just to show it yeah back sure movement. drag it back over here <clears throat> okay so it's got a pretty strong spring so going backwards is difficult but that's oh. a far 
forward as it goes. That's pretty far. So if you were trying pretty to get in there. around that, yeah. that's... You can definitely get there. And then I don't know if I can do it on top of this box, Here, but it yeah. will go completely Maybe flat. Oh, it will? Yeah. Oh, let's move this then. I don't know what we're damaging here, but if you it's pull down on the headrest. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Cadillac, buddy. I, I didn't screw that on it. There's room for all sorts of activities. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you could sleep in there. You could sleep in there, yeah. And stuff. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depending on where you break, you're long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What, what else we got? We got to, we got to. We got time for a few more questions. Yeah. We are? Wow. As far as I can see. I've got one more seatbelt thing I can kind of show you. That, yeah. That yeah. The cam lock belt. Yep. So, oh, yeah. We still got, got these. straps too. Right? Straps, yeah. a, quick, uh, a quick rundown on both of these. So, okay. so um, you've probably seen these belts. Um, it's a cam lock. That this doesn't do a great job because there's five other points that come in here. So that would replace this latch really common in in uh, on-road racing and we've been getting a lot of requests to do this for off-road the reason why we've held off is as dirt gets inside here you could imagine there's five little springs and clips and all in this tiny little thing sand and dirt really affect everything in there and you're not a hundred percent sure when you latch it if it clicked or not when you've got dirt in here and so so the day you put it in, it's badass. It's yes, yeah. brand new. It's great, <laughs> and if you never take it off road, this is perfect. But you know, for what we're doing, um, you know, we, we really are advising against it at this point. We are working on trying to do something similar that is safe for off road. Um, something you know, boots on here to keep dirt out. That would be cool. Uh, be drains cool. in here to keep it to keep let the dirt flow through it. So we are working on several yeah. different design ideas. But right now. Yeah. A cam lock belt, uh, not something PRP has, and the reason why is we focus on off-road. This is our status, which is our on-road brand, and we do have it in our on-road brand. Um, so if somebody's diehard a cam lock, yeah, that's it, it's cool. Um, you know, obviously, you know when you flick that thing loose, now you got, you know, you gotta if you want to get back in, you got to get all these yes. little points back, right? But getting it out when you're upside down is that quick. is awesome. Yes. You clip it and bam, bam, everything's done. Yeah, um, it is. That is pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. so. So. Uh, Jeremy Bulky asked, uh, what seat would Aaron run in a JKU and with what options? Uh, I would run the Enduro Elite, two inches extra tall. I'm 6'4", 300 pounds. I would keep the standard width, even though I'm a 44 inch waist, I'm over what I recommend. But this seat has lower sidewalls, so you have a little more sitting surface in there. Um, and the two inch extra tall gets those shoulders right where I need them. Um, so that's what I recommend. I'd run heated uh, because I'm a little baby when it's cold. Uh, yeah, but the wide presents problems. The right? wide presents a problem. You're not yeah. closing yeah. the door. It's not fitting yeah. to the console. Yeah. So now you're like gut in your interior. Yeah. You know, if you're going to go with our aluminum half doors and um, or you're willing to like squish in the console, you could go wide, but yeah. your factory doors and stuff, that, that's not closing. So, uh, our viewer Colby Scroggins um, made a tech tip comment. If you have a folding seat and the top is off, he said you can fold the seat forward to prevent the sun from hitting the seat. Yes. From hot. Yes. And uh, many times yeah, yeah. I've folded it forward like that and stretched an extra large trash bag over it while oh, we're yeah. transporting the Jeep, you know, to yeah. get, keep it from getting soaked. Yep. So, and again, the removable seat cushion. Yeah, thumbs up on out, that, stick man. them in the motorhome. Yeah, and, yeah <laughs> nothing's wet when you get there. Even, you know, when we go to the desert in the winter, I, I, it's, it stays warm in the RV, right? You slap it in, oh, you yeah. sit down at least, you yeah, know, when freezing. you start off in the day, yeah. it's not ice cold. Yeah. So. The same viewer asked, the wide seat does not fit a factory JK, question mark? Nope. No. Nope. No, not between the center console and the door. No. Dwayne White asked, how strong is the reclining seat? Could the me mechanism fail in a crash? That's a, that's a great question. And I wish I brought the seat frame of this so I could show you the, you know. The, is the, it pretty beefy? It's really beefy. Yeah, we spent a, a while sourcing a really strong hinge and uh, the, the parts that the hinge bolt to that are welded to the seat frame 
uh, you know, our 316 steel. It's, it's, it's all a really... Again, you're an off-road strong, company, or an off-road right? company. So, you know, we are building yeah. this to feature. Uh, <laughs> we do not want a one-sided yeah. hinge seat. Like and I had seat, these, so, yeah. this exact same seat in the Terramoto before I put in the race seats yeah. for years, for like seven years, yep. that we just beat the daylights out of, and they were fine. Oh, I've seen you drive. Yeah. You don't drive that hard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, viewer Jeff Lone asked, do you make covers for the seats to protect them from the elements when not in use? Yes. Yeah. So we do. We make what we call protective seat cover. They're under the accessories on our website. Yeah. And it just basically makes this like a, a tent. You know, it comes over the back, slopes down, elastic on the front and loops uh like velcro loops to go around your seat belts so yeah. yeah we do have those kind of like the plastic trash bag but a yeah. nice a nice yeah. version a real fancy yeah. trash bag yeah <laughs> they won't blow off like the trash bag right <laughs> okay, we've got two hmm. questions coming in at the last minute okay uh, david bucky on 6-2 and gonna do a cage in my jku should i go with a summit for double buckets since no room left to recline anyway yeah the summit or the daily driver yeah, is both that the, are uh, both are. They were pictured there on one of those. Yeah, Maybe back let's go back and look. Summit or the back daily driver? More. Here. Yeah. So gotcha. the summit, um, they're going to be the same height. So you're going to six two. You should be fine with a standard height, a seat, and you're going to get a little more in where your knee bends, a little more containment where your knee bends, but less at the hip. Here you're going to get more at the hip and less where you slide in and out. So you are going to have to kind of lift your body weight up over that. This is a pretty cool design looking seat though. So that is a pretty popular seat as well. Yeah, and that's really got the big deal in there. Yeah, and we do that same thing yeah. here where we really yeah. put a large yeah. uh, wow. That looks like that's getting popular across the line. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a little pushback sometimes, guys look at it, but it, once, once you they sit in it, once it, you use I it, know, like, oh, I know. Right. I did the same thing when you yeah. told me about it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Pamela Wilkie Spear, I'm in and out of my Jeep a lot because of winching. Is the Enduro Elite the easiest for side mounting? Yep. For getting in and out of, the Enduro Elite or the Daily Driver are going to be the easiest two seats to get out of. So really, you got fixed back if you're okay with not reclining, or Enduro Elite if you want uh, a reclining seat. That's also easy to get in. Is this one still recliner or no? No, it's fixed. Summit doesn't recline. Okay. That's another fixed back, but it's a little harder with those to get in and out. Yeah. A tad bit. Yeah. Miguel Sanchez, what seat would you would would fit a JL for daily and off-road? So again, no seat mounts for a JL, so that would be on you to figure out how to put those in. Um, but right here. Yeah. You want to recline? Or two fixed back options. Still the same. JK JL, I'd recommend that this top row across the board. And, and then if you're going to put door bars or you're going to use it mostly for off-road, then, then there's some other options. But for typical half yeah, half street drive and half trail rig, that's a great option. Yeah. Our friend Colby Scroggins, again, fingers crossed for that rear seat idea to come to life. Possibility of offering only a left or a right side, question mark. I mean, that's where you go to something like this. I mean, kind of like what I have in Terramoto where they're just yeah. separate. I mean, you could just put two recliners back there. We do have that option in yeah. the JK now is you could bolt, you could do four Enduro elites all the way around. They would fold forward. Um, not sure if that was exactly what you want, but um, yeah. Yeah, it is. and it's, you know, obviously like in a JL or JK right now, those fold flat so you could sleep back there. Yep. This isn't quite that, but, right. you know, um, yeah. I don't know anybody that's offering something like that in the aftermarket. No. And, and, and the question would be, is what, what are we going to try and gain? If, are we going to just duplicate what OEM already has? You know, or what, what feature are we trying to add? How can we make that better is, is what we always try to do when we're designing something. So, you know, if we design that exact same seat that folds up, what other features is it adding? Is it, does it hold you in better? It probably can't if it folds that much. Um, like the factory one. Like the, fa you know. Right, that's so. why it's flat. Yeah, so yeah. that's why we went with those seat cover options. So, you know, we can just cover those to look like they match the fronts and yeah. we can do fronts if you want, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colby Scroggins said it was a two-door. Oh. He added that he has a two-door. So then that's more like, uh, 
you know, this style, right? Where in it the, gets into, because it, it's yeah. more like a TJ. Yep, yep. Right? Yeah, we're not going to be able to put those in the back of the tail. Right. You, you could put one, you could put one back there, but. Yeah, you know, yeah. one in the middle, yeah. yeah. All right. right. Well, yeah. Do, let's let's touch on limit straps just real quick. Okay. Real quick we'll on, on real quick on limit straps. So the the idea of a limit strap is if you put aftermarket suspension on your Jeep and it's flexing, obviously it's supposed to a lot more. A lot more. It, you, you don't want the you know the weight of that axle to pull your shock apart, and so you're going to put a limit strap on to limit it and stop the shock from basically pulling apart. Most shocks have bump stops built into them internally, um, but this is a heck of a lot cheaper than a new shock. Yeah. So, so this is this is the way to go. Now, uh, on a limit strap, we get a lot of questions of which ones do I need for this vehicle. Um, th they're not made vehicle specific. The, we make these in one inch increments from eye to eye, and it's up to the customer to mount them, basically. Yes. You guys sell so kits. we sell the tabs and the all tabs that stuff. Are, yep. yep, the bolts, everything. And so then you could cycle your suspension, figure out exactly how far you need it to go. Yep. You know, how, how are you going to limit it? You need to stop it about an inch before it, it maxes out. Call us and we'll build you a limit strap that fits that. And then the, the issue that we have a hard time explaining is the stretch. So this is fabric. I mean, this is nylon webbing sewn. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a quarter inch tolerance when we're making these. So they may be 11 and a quarter, maybe 10 and three quarters. Uh, that's our 11 inch strap. Um, and then depending on the weight you put on it, it's going to stretch. It could stretch another inch. So when we stretch test these, um, we rate them at 10,000 pounds and they break at about 12. Um, and they stretch, uh, a foot long strap will stretch an inch before it breaks. So you're not putting 10,000 pounds on it with your axle. <laughs> no, no, even so, a heavy axle is a thousand pounds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So right. you're, you're going to get. You know, you're still going to get a half inch of stretch out of it, though, even yeah. with that, especially with some hits. So yeah. that's something to keep in mind. They do stretch. Um, we do build them in one inch increments, not half inch increments. Uh, it, it's just not that fine tuned of a. No, uh, and when you put the tab on the frame or the axle, you can adjust yeah, that. You can adjust bit. it at that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. And, and we do make adjustable clevises. I don't know if your tabs work with those clevises, but that is something that's out there. Th where Those are cool. Well, yeah, yeah, they have a spring too. on them. Yeah. A little much for. Uh, for a typical trail rig, <laughs> yeah. but they're out there. If, if you so. got money to burn, they're right. <laughs> they're out there. Yeah. So, I would. So, I've seen more normal coil bucket style break, What you don't realize is up on top where the shock bolts into the frame or the body, um, they're held in with two quarter inch size bolts and those damn things yank out. And then you know what happens when that shock lets go, which is the limit strap, then the spring takes off and good luck getting that buddy back in there. So on the trail. Uh, yeah. it's not pretty. And I see it ha like every time we go to the Rubicon, I see it happen. Yeah. It's just, you put limit straps on, you know, again, it's a $25 item. It's cheap yeah. insurance. It's cheap, yeah. <laughs> Even if you got regular shocks, regular shocks are still a hundred bucks for a cheap one. Yeah. You know, and yeah. some are like and ruining five hundred bucks. Is worth the heck of a lot. Yeah, yeah. And because <laughs> when bucks. that spring falls out, right, and your shock comes off, now there's no limit. So that means your brake line just broke. You might have trashed your drive shaft, right? You've you've over traveled everything. Yeah. So you don't want that. And for for that little expense, yep. I highly recommend it. Two quick questions. What's turnaround time on limit straps right now? And should he double up on limit straps? Is that a good or bad idea? <laughs> well, we have limit straps in stock, right? We, yep. we keep ample supply of these things at all different sizes. So you'd have to call in and talk to our guys. Um, I don't know if they order them direct, is that a few? We have, we have several of them in stock. And then, um, you know, depending on, you know, depending on production, we're, we're a week to five weeks to to build custom ones if, if we don't have if them in have stock. To, yeah. yeah. But we definitely rely on, on people like Generite to stock this stuff to have it ready for you guys. So what we should mention is um, there's there's types of wrap, right? Yeah. Single, double, quad, right? Yep. Um, this looks like a double, maybe. So this is actually a quad. If a you, quad. It, there's okay. four layers of webbing, and that's going to be really hard to see on the camera. <laughs> but 
I mean, it wraps around, it only wraps around here twice, but it's four layers thick. And so that's we, what we run. Yeah. yeah. And this is pretty much all we make. Um, you, you can get a, uh, a single layer where there's just one, one layer webbing, a double but or there's double. Those don't last long. For the few dollars difference, cents difference really in manufacturing cost, we just went four layer only. Yeah. Um, the only time you're really gonna have one of these breaks is if you mount them sideways. So when the pressure is pulling on it, it's not pulling straight down, you're pulling on the webbing sideways, it'll start to tear. It'll start to tear. Yeah. But you know, if you get it mounted. It's straight, pretty durable it's, still, even then. It's it you know, is it's, yeah, it won't just it let is. go. Yeah. But, so um, but yeah, good question. And all you need is one of those per corner. Oh, all right. Yeah, That's it. Corner, yeah. yeah. So plenty. So all right. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for our guest coming yeah, out. He had quite a drive to get me. here today. And I uh, appreciate everybody watching. We will be back next Tuesday live from the Rubicon. So uh, please tune in and check out the show then. We'll see you then. Thank you.